Good evening, everybody. It's good to be back today. I was uh, out of commission, to say the least, on Sunday, and uh, I hated that. I remember as a young man, my dad used to talk a lot about how that when he would have to miss service, for sickness, it would torment him. And that was even the day, see, growing up, my dad pastored a church that was about a 30-minute drive from where I was raised. It was in another county. I was raised in Greene County, and we went to church, and dad pastored in Hart County in Jonesville. And uh, dad stayed home sick and should have. You know, he was sick. And uh, he got so tore up about it he throwed a shirt and a tie on and drove to church <laughs> and got there right as church was ending. He was bad shaped sick. He had no business showing up. And uh, uh, I just remember as a young man hearing him talk about, you know, the burden. And I experienced some of that Sunday. And I moped around and Heather was like, Caleb, what are you going to do about it? And I said, there ain't nothing to do about it. But uh, I just wished I was here. And so it's good to be back here. It's good to feel better today. I'll say that because Sunday we just won't go there. Hallelujah. But anyway, um, again, thank you all for being here. I appreciate uh, the men that stood, Brother Zach, Brother Connor, and uh, appreciate what they're doing here at Grace Baptist Church. Amen. And appreciate, uh, I just appreciate God's people being faithful. And let's talk about a little bit of prayer requests before we have our Bible study. Um, first, let's begin by reminding uh, everyone, let's be faithful to pray for our uh, missionaries and their families and their works. Uh, appreciate these men and women who have given it all to go to the middle of nowhere and do something for the cause of Christ. And so let's pray for them. Let's also pray for our uh, junior church going on right below us. It's a blessing down there. And I appreciate those that are standing in the gap, amen, and doing that work. Uh, let's continue to pray for our church renovation. Uh, it looks like we're kind of going through some seasons right now where they got a whole lot done, a whole lot done, and right now they're just kind of hurrying up and waiting because they've got some other things going on. So do be praying about that. Be praying for the loan process. I spoke with the bank this week. They're putting in all our paperwork. They've got a lawyer who types all that out. He's working on that. And uh, they've got what they called an evaluator. So they were supposed to have a, an appraisal, they thought, but because of the amount of the loan not being very much as compared to the value of what we have, they said really all we need is an evaluation, which means they'll probably have a guy drive by and say, yeah, they're, they're good for that money. <laughs> it's kind of how the loan officer described it to me, which can happen any day now. So... Uh, the ball's rolling. Let's continue to pray that it don't stop and everything continues to work smoothly and according to God's will. Um, also, let's remember these prayer requests. Let's pray for Alan and Jennifer. Uh, as Miss Michelle mentioned, she's starting some medication for her infertility. And uh, so let's pray for them. Pray that the Lord uh, bless them with their heart's desire. They want to uh, have a baby. And I'm for that, by the way. Amen. That's that, that should be our desire. That should be something that you're just born to want. And they want that. And I want that for them too. So let's pray for them. Let's pray for, uh, this is supposed to be Terry Robertson. I failed to correct that again. Y'all have to forgive me. But Terry Robertson battling cancer. And so let's pray for him. Any update on that that you know of? Okay, so right now he's needing surgery, but his heart's not cooperating. Brother Aaron, you said you know him too, right? Yeah, we don't know him. Okay. So let's pray for him. He's got heart issues that are preventing surgery. So let's pray the Lord resolve that. Um, let's continue to pray for the Thomas family. Um, I believe that'd be... A good thing to continue to pray for Miss Janet, who lost her mother a couple weeks ago, and Brother Kerry, and they were very appreciative of all the food, so we appreciate that. Amen. Let's pray for them. Let's pray for uh, Miss Eunice Norfleet. Anybody got an update on Miss Eunice? Miss Marlene, have you heard? I hadn't either, 
last thing was she was going to have a biopsy. Okay. Okay. Well, let's pray about that. She was going to meet the doc today. So let's pray that the Lord uh, give them a good uh, report there and the Lord help her. Okay. Um, team, pray for Gary Meese. Any update on Gary Meese? You had not heard? Okay. Well, let's pray for him. This is your friend, right? Not a cousin. That's Hey, y'all can, though. So let's pray for him. No update. But let's pray the Lord help him. Let's remember Brother William's family, uh, William Kilpatrick. Uh, let's pray for them again. They lost, uh, he lost an uncle. So let's do remember them today when we pray. Remember the Holcomb family. Uh, let's pray for Paul Stamper. I don't know if we got an update on Paul Stamper. Okay. Yeah. 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 Don't know where he's at. Shingles is a neurological thing. It sounds like maybe it's actually dealing with his mind. So, okay. Is he still in the hospital? Okay, let's pray for this this brother, Paul Stamper. Let's remember Walton Thomas. This, of course, is my wife's nephew, and he's doing some better, but still dealing with these rashes. And um, uh, we got a couple different opinions on why, but regardless, they want it resolved. And he's the he's the four year he's same age as Josiah, and had uh, his appendix rupture on him. Had to go have surgery for that. He's doing better with all of that. He is home, but he's still battling these rashes. So do be praying for him. Remember uh, Jennifer Whittle. She asked we remember her grandmother. So let's remember her. Remember my papa, Elbert Shirley. He's having bilateral reverse total shoulder replacements. One at a time, not at the same time. One at a time. But that'll be a big deal. Pray for him. I was blessed. Miss uh, Leanna shared a video of her granddad on the uh, Unity page, uh, home and playing the piano, uh, Brother John Siebert. We praise the Lord, amen. They didn't think he'd live, and he's home. Now, he's not out of the water. Um, Brother John's still dealing with kidney failure and going to have to deal with dialysis. And uh, she said that he's also dealing with a gallbladder that needs to be removed. Um, but he's not been approved to have surgery. So uh, he's living with a drain bag for that right now. Uh, of course, she said he's in good spirits. What little bit of exposure I've been around that man, I am not doubting that. Amen. He's a godly man. He loves the Lord, and I appreciate him. Uh, she says he's very tired. So let's pray for him. Ain't that a blessing, church? Amen. Amen. Let's pray for Brother John. Pray the Lord to help him. Uh, let's pray for Haley Shirley. I didn't know if I could really go in much detail there. Okay. So Haley and, um, and Ricky uh, conceived. And she had some positive pregnancy tests, but then started showing symptoms that she was losing the baby and went in, and they thought it was an ectopic Sunday, correct? But didn't find any sign of that, and didn't find any sign of a baby. So, please, yeah. Okay. She's, so she, okay. So as, as Miss Michelle said, she has experienced a miscarry. And so let's pray for her, ladies, um, especially you ladies. Any of you that have maybe been through that, especially, um, you know what that's like. You know the pain. You know the suffering. And so I texted with Ricky some, and he said everybody seemed to be doing good. And I said, how's Haley between the ears? Because that's, you know, that's the biggest problem, biggest struggle, uh, especially with the hormones and things that she's going to go through with this as well. So 
Lift her up in prayer. Amen, church. Pick this up. Help Haley and Brother Ricky by way of prayer and ask the Lord to help them. Amen. And if you can, especially for those of you that maybe has been through something, send her a message. Most of you's got Facebook. If you don't, you can walk up to her. She'll be here on Sunday, Lord willing. And let her know. Let her know that you, uh, you've been there and that uh, you're praying for her. That's what it's all about. Amen, church. Amen. That's why the Bible says that's why he gives us the comfort that we have so that we can comfort others with the comfort that we got from him. And so uh, I, w I felt like it was the Lord's will to say that. Uh, if you're a lady and you've been through that, uh, say something to her. Write her a Facebook message. Go up to her. Do something. And men, if you're, if you're a man or a husband and, and you're, you've been through uh, a wife that's experienced these things and a dad, uh, because that was a baby. I don't want to get off on a tangent, but that's a baby. Amen. Uh, they're going to meet that baby in glory. That I believe. Hallelujah. Um, so if you're a dad and you know what it's like to have a wife go through that, uh, maybe reach out to Ricky. Let him know um, that you're praying for him. So, all right. Let's also pray for Lily England. It's Brother Josh England's daughter. And we've been sharing all the information about them. I'm sure some of y'all have seen that. I don't remember how old she is, 10, 11, 12 years old. But um, Lily caught E. coli. She got E. coli in her system and started passing blood, went to the hospital. While in the hospital, they said pretty much we just got to keep her hydrated with fluids, let it run its course, and pray that it doesn't progress quickly which can really cause some kidney issues and things of that nature in the future. Everything was going good, and then they start checking her levels, her blood levels, things like that, and they find that her A1C was not correct, and it was bad. It was high, and then it was low. And so um, they ended up diagnosing Lily with type 1 diabetes. And those doctors are convinced that she's been diabetic after talking to Brother Josh and Sister Tiffany uh, and, and her and them telling them some of the stuff she's been experiencing lately, they're convinced that this has been something that's kind of been going on and they've caught it early because of the E. coli. That's amazing, amen, church? And, um, you know, God allows us to go through things sometimes for our good. And so uh, the England family has been very gracious to praise the Lord. I appreciate that. And they're back home. But again, same as these others, as I've mentioned, their uh, journey isn't over. And they're finding that this is, this is going to be an ongoing struggle, you know, because she's going to have to take some injections of insulin, things of that nature. And it's, it's, been, it's been difficult on the family to go through this. And, uh, I mean, so pray for them. Pray for the England family, okay? Uh, they, they, they've asked for it, and let's be faithful to do that, okay? So let's pray for her and her diabetes and, and the family as well. Remember Miss Debbie, she texted me tonight and said her sinuses and such have been going crazy this week. So she, that's why she's not here tonight. She asked we pray for her, so let's do that. Uh, remember Miss Debbie. Remember Darren Rayburn? Uh, he's got, he had an MRI with some uh, white lesion on his brain. And so let's pray for him. And I've got some here that, I've remembered as I've stood here, so y'all forgive me. In my office, I'm in study mode, and sometimes I forget them, but uh, let's pray for the nursing home ministry. Uh, it's been a blessing lately. I went in there. I went, let's see, I preached last Thursday. I got to preach to them. We've been going in Sunday at 2 and Thursday at 6. Last Thursday, I went. There was three ladies, and Friday, when I got to work, one of those ladies come up to me and she said, that was the best message I've ever heard in my life. That's what she said. <laughs> That's, that blessed me. I mean, you just don't know how much that blessed me because in my history, I had, a, and I've told this to the church, I've confessed it to those ladies. I had a terrible taste in my mouth for nursing home ministry. I did. I mean, I, as a young man, I just didn't like it. I thought it was uh, the hardest thing I'd ever done. <laughs> And I'm thankful God grows our hind ends up, amen. And man, you can go in there Sunday. They had 12 residents come, which is the most that I haven't, I didn't get to go Sunday. I've never seen 12 in there. And so uh, 
God's able to do something with that ministry. And uh, I think it's a blessing to get to do it. So pray for it. Also, I want to mention a man back from where I'm from named Jerry Fields. He's battling cancer. I want to pray for him. I want to remember Dawn. How did her results come back? Okay. Dawn is going back tomorrow. Now, is this possibly more surgery? What What do we... No, no. So she's had to change doctors. Let's pray for her. Remember Miss Dawn had to have a doctor change, had to uh, go through all that rigmarole, like Miss Miss Marlene said, have records shipped. What a mess. I hate to hear that. Let's pray that the Lord work these things out and she get a good report and a good bill of health in regards to this melanoma. Like Miss Marlene said, you just don't mess around with that. So I'm, I appreciate it. Let's pray for her, okay? And let's remember Connor. Brother Connor will be preaching Sunday at Mount Lebanon. And uh, let's remember him tonight. Okay, that's all I've got. Anybody else with a prayer request before we pray? Miss Katie. Good. In his brain. Sure. But it's not cancer. It's not going to progress. And it's not the neuroblastoma. That's the big thing. Wow, let's give God praise, amen. We've been praying for this man. He's what, 30, 28, something like that? Ricky Pierce Jr. And uh, been going through it. They took a biopsy of the tumor in his brain and said it is non-cancerous. And we praise the Lord. That's a miracle. So let's be sure to give him thanks tonight, amen, church? Somebody else, prayer request before we pray. Yes, Michelle. Where is she? She's still in Glasgow. They've got her back at Columbia. Really? Okay. Let's remember them. That's tough. Amen, church. So let's pray for Miss Tina. Remember her mama, Jean. And uh, pray for their strength. Somebody else. Chris? Oh. Is he here? No. Oh, I was about to say, if he no, is, he's three, tough. Like 13, he's done and three, he's done My goodness. Well, visiting yesterday or today? Today. today. Let's pray for little Max. Today. It happened today. <laughs> Fell out of a tree, broke his arm, bone came through the skin. Had to have surgery and screws. So that's a little, that's a young man that rides our vans. Let's pray for him, pray for his family. Amen. Pray that the Lord give them health. Hallelujah. I fell out of a tree and broke my arm when I was a kid. I'll never forget it. It was terrible. I landed with my arm stretched out and my elbow hyperextended backward. I'll never forget it. I looked down and seen my arm and thought it broke off. And I stood up and then, ah, and put it back. And I went in the house and I told my mom, I broke my arm. And she just didn't believe me. You didn't break your arm. Stop it. I said, I fell out of the tree. She said, son, I'm going to take you to the hospital. And if it ain't broke, I'm going to whoop the hide, the hide off of you, boy. I thought, great. 
It was broken, hallelujah, amen. <laughs> That's one of the first times I ever prayed I was actually hurt, hallelujah. But, uh, amen, I thought I'd share. That's funny. Ain't God good? All right, anybody else with a prayer request before we pray? Anything at all? Amen. 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 Ain't that good, church? Thank you, Miss Cindy, for that. I'm I'm thankful for when he does those things. And and it just it makes all the difference in the world. Thank you, Miss Cindy. I appreciate that. All right. Anybody else got any prayer requests before we pray? Let's remember what? You have a small one? Yeah. Let's remember that. Remember Miss Lisa's sister, Ashley, and the baby. Say that again. I got you. Just hold on. No. <laughs> Kayliana. That's good. Kayliana. Praise God. So let's remember her, Ashley and baby. And remember uh, the teachers throughout the years that's going to have to read that name. <laughs> Where'd she get that? You have no idea. I do. You do? Oh, okay. I have a friend who black. Okay. 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 That's cool. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Praise the Lord. Okay. Well. Uh, let's pray for her and the baby and uh, remember them, okay? All right. Anybody else before we pray? <laughs> hey, a merry heart does good like a medicine, amen? One more? Amen. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Amen. Different. Yes, ma'am. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. Because I mean, I've 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 heard it. I've heard you and Miss Tina, and the tall order that that was. And so, I appreciate you sharing that. Let's give the Lord praise for what He's doing in their life. Okay. All right, everybody that can, uh, if you'd like to, we'll gather in. If not, that's fine. But be faithful to pray with me, and let's go, Lord, in prayer together over these things, okay? And uh, be sure to pray for me. I desire y'all pray for me as I try to expound on God's Word together, okay? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. Thank you, Lord, for this church. Thank you, Lord, for each and every person that's here, God. Thank you for their faithfulness. Thank you, Lord. Uh, for the camaraderie. Thank you for the fellowship. Lord, thank you for the worship. And God, I desperately pray uh, that you touch us here tonight in this service. Lord, I, I pray, God, that uh, you would help us, Lord, as we try to, uh, Lord, uh, learn from your word and apply it and appreciate it in our life, God. Help me to expound on it clearly. And Lord, I pray that God's people would understand what thus saith the word of God. Lord, I pray you touch our missionaries, help them on their field, touch our junior church tonight and all the workers. I pray, Lord, that we would see souls saved directly through and by that ministry. Lord, I pray you touch the nursing home ministry. Thank you, Lord, for the fruit we've been seeing. I pray, Lord, that you would save souls directly through and by, Lord, the influence of that ministry. And Lord, touch our church renovation. Touch the workers, touch the process, Lord. Touch our church financially. We just want to be good stewards of what you've allowed us to have, and we want to take good care of it. And I pray you'd watch over us as we try to do that. Lord, be with Alan and Jennifer. Lord, thank you, Lord, that they're in church. That's a big deal. And Lord, uh, that family wasn't sure. And I praise your holy name for allowing them to see these things. And Lord, please help them as they, Lord, seek to have a baby. They want one so desperately. And Lord, I desire that you'd allow them to. I I want them to have one, and I pray that you'd uh, answer that prayer. Uh, be with 
the uh, Lord be with Terry Robertson as he battles cancer. I pray, Lord, that the heart issues would be resolved that are preventing surgery. Lord, be with the Thomas family and Miss Janet. She mourns the loss of her mother. Uh, Lord, I pray you be with the Holcomb family as they uh, mourn the loss of that loved one. Be with Miss Eunice Norfleet. Lord, I pray that the uh, meeting she had with the doctor today went well and she got a good report. Be with Gary Meese. I pray you'd help him. Lord, be with Brother William and his family as they mourn the loss of uh, Gary Markham. Or I pray you'd be with Paul Stamper. Uh, he's in the hospital dealing with these shingles issues, and Lord, we pray you'd resolve those things. Lord, I pray you'd be with Walt. Uh, touch him and help him and resolve these rashes. We thank you, Lord, for uh, helping them in his surgery. Pray you'd continue to watch over him. Or be with uh, Jennifer Whittle's grandmother, Lord, and her health. Be with my papa, Lord, Elbert, as he has these shoulder surgeries. Or thank you for touching John Seaver, allowing him to come home. Lord, we pray for his kidney function. We pray for his gallbladder surgery and ask, Lord, that you would allow that to take place, if it be you will. Lord, touch Haley and Ricky. Lord, they're experiencing, Lord, what it's like to miscarry. And Lord, I, I'm thankful, Lord, that there's a heaven prepared. I'm thankful, Lord, that that uh, child, Lord, that that child is, is uh, Lord, being taken care of in a good place and will never experience, Lord, the sufferings of this life. But Lord, I pray you touch Ricky and Haley as they suffer. Lord, they're in this life and it's not easy and I don't want... Lord, to negate the struggle. But Lord, I pray that they would learn what it's like to be comforted by Jesus Christ. Thank you for them. Pray you'd help them. Lord, be with Lily and her battle with diabetes. We pray you touch that family. Thank you for bringing her home and, and bringing her through E. coli. Be with Miss Debbie uh, Hoskins. Lord, she's dealing with sinus problems and such. I pray you'd help her. Be with Darren Rayburn, Lord, as he has... Uh, Apparently, he received an MRI with some lesions on his brain. We pray you give him a touch and help in that regard, Lord. I, I pray you be with the Jerry Fields, Lord, this brother from back in Greene County battling cancer. We ask you to help him and touch him, Lord. Be with Miss Dawn. She goes back tomorrow. She's having a doctor's change, Lord, and it's been, uh, Lord, like Miss Marlene said, a mess. But, Lord, we pray that you turn the mess into a masterpiece. And I pray you'd help her and touch her and Jerry and, and, uh, Lord, I pray you'd help them in this time as she deals with this melanoma, God. I pray, Lord, you'd be with Brother Connor as he preaches next Sunday. Lord, give him power and authority and anointing as he tries to stand. I pray you'd help him be with Miss Katie. Lord, and uh, thank you for her praise for uh, Ricky Pierce, Jr. Lord, I pray that you'd touch him. And thank you for, Lord, not allowing his tumor to be cancerous. Lord, be with Miss Tina and Jean. Lord, I pray you touch them. Uh, give them strength and, and Lord, watch over them. We'll be with little Max in our bus ministry. Lord, we pray to help him to heal up quickly. Uh, Lord, thank you for the praise report from Miss Cindy. Thank you for intervening in her life in a specific way. Lord, thank you for Ashley giving her that baby. Lord, we pray you touch that baby and touch Ashley. Help them to give their life to you. It's a privilege today to get to be a Christian. And I so thank you, Lord, for that. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. <clears throat> I appreciate y'all joining me in prayer. And so now let's go to the Lord in His Word. I've been looking forward to preaching. And uh, I want to uh, I want to get back into this book of Romans because I kind of, I hate to say it like this, but I know where we're going. And it's not that where we're at ain't good. It's not that at all. But, uh, you know, the Bible is uh is filled with uh good and 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 sobering truths and it's also got good uh, shout worthy truths amen and chapter eight's a good chapter we're heading to chapter eight but before you get to chapter eight you got to get to romans chapter seven amen you got to uh we got to look at the whole counsel of the word of god amen you got to take it all you can't pick and choose that's what the jehovah's witnesses have done and that's what this other crowd's doing. I seen a video the other day of Stephen Furtick holding up a Bible or having somebody hold up a Bible. And uh, he was taking a pen and just marking out verses, saying those ain't supposed to be in there and those ain't supposed to be in there. And I mean, I don't know who the guy thinks he is, but he's wrong. Amen. amen. And uh, amen. And we, we, we as Bible believers, King James Bible believers, we want to take the whole counsel of God's Word. 
And chapter 7 comes before chapter 8. That's where we are. Some of these things are tough. Some of these things are not easy on your flesh. But they're good for your flesh. Amen. And Paul here does a wonderful thing. Up to this point, Paul has made us all aware. It don't matter if you're Jew. It don't matter if you're Gentile. It don't matter who raised you, who didn't raise you. It doesn't matter what part of the world you come from. We're all guilty. He's made that very clear. It doesn't matter what you think you know. It don't matter how good you think you are. We are all guilty before God in and of ourselves. Amen. Here in chapter 7, starting in about verse 13 tonight, uh, we're going to look at we're going to look at Paul and and what he's been doing here in chapter 7 is he's been talking about how that the covenant, that Old Testament covenant, the, the, the covenant of the law given unto Moses, that we're no longer bound by that law. We're no longer wed to that law. He, he gave that analogy of a man and a wife, and a wife who, uh, while being married to one man, goes and tries to marry to another, and how that that's inappropriate, that's adultery. Amen. Uh, and that in order to, uh, uh, in order to uh, go and marry another, the first one must have died, is what he's saying. And so in our life, that analogy is perfect because we're no longer married to that Old Testament law. No, but that relationship has died, and now we are to marry or submit ourselves to the New Testament, that new, uh, uh, that gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And and that's what Paul's been doing. And, and he talked about <laughs> many things here in this passage. And, and last time I was with you, I believe it was last Wednesday, we looked at the rehashing of the law. And, and what Paul do, uh, did there is Paul reiterated how that the law is good. He said, what shall we say then in verse 7? Uh, is the law sin? God forbid. The law is not sin. The law is not uh, uh, wicked. The law is not wrong. The law is right. And that's what Paul wanted us to realize. But you see, there was there's if <laughs> as you read through that passage, and we won't tonight for the sake of time, you'll find still in you and in me, maybe not in you, but in me, you still find this kind of, you know, kind of like Paul is hinting that the law is good, the law is right. But it's not good, it's not been good for me, and it's not been good to me, if you will. And it's caused me to experience death even. Now, in verse 13, Paul addresses that mindset. By the inspiration of God, I so thank the Lord for His Word. Amen? Amen. Because this, is the, this very question that Paul asks himself in verse 13 is what many naturally begin to question in their own mind by what Paul has already said. And so let's look at verse 13. He says, was then that... Am I in the right, am I in the right book? Hold on a minute. Verse, yeah. Was then that which is good made death unto me, God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual. Mm. We know that the law is spiritual, he says. Notice, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do allow not, or excuse me, that which I do I allow not. For what I would, that do I not, but what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Hmm. He says, verse 17, Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. That's an important verse. Notice verse 18, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For the... For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good I for the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not. Paul said that I do. Now if I do that I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. There it is again. That's an important verse. I find then a law that when I would do good. 
evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into, the, into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Love verse 24. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. This is a lot, amen? And I've, I'm, I'm trying to take a big bite tonight. But I want to talk about here, Paul, how that he reiterates life. Okay, and that's going to make sense the closer I get to the end of this thought. But it's going to come directly from this passage. Paul here begins in verse 13 talking about how that that which is good has seemingly been made death unto us. And that which is good, that, that which is good here is referring to the law. Back in verse 7, he was referring to the law. He said, is the law sin? Now here in verse 13, he's essentially saying, uh, he's essentially saying, is the law which is good been made death unto me? Because it has, it is, if you will, identified the sin that's in me. And that's what the law does. Verse 7 said the law is not sin, but what it does is it recognizes sin. I say amen. I say amen. It tells us what's right, what's wrong, so that we can look and then therefore say, well, I'm, I sinned here. That's what the law does. Well, in verse number 13, Paul then asks this question. So then, if it's not sin, but it recognizes what is sin, does that mean that it being good brings forth bad in us? And this is a, in my opinion, a formidable assumption. After what Paul has said, after what all Paul has brought into our light, he's asking himself this question here because he wanted to specifically and specially clarify uh, uh, with us this, this understanding because what he has said thus far could lead someone to thinking that. And so what he does is first off, he gives us another emphatic no. God forbid. God forbid. God is not, nor will he ever be held responsible for sin or badness or evil or wickedness or iniquity. Amen. I, it doesn't matter what term you use. There's, there's so many biblical terms that, that God gives us that all lump together in, in a wicked and ungodly action that comes out of a man. Amen, church? Are we on the same page? I mean, there's so many terms. And what some, so what some men have tried to do is they've tried to point back to God and say, ultimately, it's His fault. And what Paul says is, is Paul says, no, 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 God forbid we blame Him for our sin and our bad behavior. An emphatic no. And then he gives us a, a uh, emendation of knowledge, a, a correction, if you will, of, of how we should think, our knowledge, our, 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 uh, how we understand the truth here. There's a fact here that he wants us to correct. There in verse 13 he says, uh, uh, he says, God forbid, but sin, notice that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become, notice, exceeding sinful. We talked about this last Wednesday. You know what sin wants? You know what sin does? It, it, is, it is a gravitational pull the opposite direction of God. And there's no goodness that will ever, listen to me, help sin. What do you mean? You can't make sin good. You can't make sin less sinful. Amen. Amen. It, it is the literal desire to be evil, wicked, wrong, uh, uh, to, to transgress, to, to, to cause iniquity. That's what sinfulness is. And you know what the commandment does to sin? It doesn't make sin want to be better. It doesn't make sin try to uh, be less sinful. No, the commandment makes sin 
more exceeding sinful. That's what it does. God's goodness doesn't help sin. It wars with sin. Amen. So Paul says here that we need to correct how we think. The law is good. And the law is not what causes the badness to come out of us. Sin is what causes bad and evil and wicked to come out of us. That's what Paul says. It's the sin's fault that's inside of you and me that causes us to be sinful. And just because the law recognizes what is and what is not sin doesn't mean the law is what's bringing out the death or the badness. No, it's still the sin. Do y'all understand what Paul's saying tonight? Say amen if you do. That's important that we have a comprehension that everything that God's ever done was good and nothing can be pinned on Him that's bad. And then he gives us an enlightening note there in verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. And Paul says this, but I am carnal, sold under sin. In the writings of Paul, again, we won't go through it all for the sake of time, but I'm going to educate you a little bit. Brother Chris, dad talked about this, my dad, at the men's conference. You relayed to me how that it was like, oh my gosh. You've got three types of people in the world. You've got the natural man, the carnal man, and the spiritual man. Connor's shaking his head. He got to be at that men's conference. The natural man is how we are born. Natural. That sinful nature. Is Paul here still yet in his sin? No. Does Paul here call himself natural? No, he calls himself carnal. Herein is the carnal man. He's been born again, but he's still having a temptation and a struggle to live in his flesh. We know Paul, Apostle Paul, living in the dispensation of grace here, has been born again. We know it took place on the road to Damascus. Amen? Amen, church? Amen? Amen? That's what a carnal man is. A carnal man is a man that is saved, but is, but is struggling with that natural, that nature that he always used to fight, or not fight, but live in, that has been carried over because guess what? We have two natures now. If you're saved, you have two natures in you. You have the nature that God has given you and the nature that Adam gave you. And when we get to the place where we see that, it might just change our whole world. And when we get to the place where we can recognize that, it'll give us more victory. Paul says, I am carnal. The law is spiritual. We had the natural man, the carnal man, and the spiritual man. You know what Paul said? We are to walk in the Spirit. Amen. Paul said, I die daily. Amen. Got two natures. Don't it all just make sense the more we see it? If we can take a step back and see the big picture. We're still packing that natural man. All right? That natural uh, uh, tendency that we used to live in and have no conviction because we were lost and it was just normal. It was natural. But now that we're saved... Now that we're saved, we still have to war with those things. And, and if we're not careful, we can find ourselves leaning in the natural direction. And that's to be carnal. And Paul says here, I am carnal. He's a saved man. He's God's man. He's the apostle to the church. And he's dealing with his carnality. And he's saying the law is spiritual. It's good. It's godly. It's right. It's just. It's holy. There's nothing bad about the law today. But I'm carnal. This is an enlightening note that we must understand in this formidable assumption. No, the law is not what leads to death. It's sin. And we need to correct how we think about that. We need to take this note with us. We're carnal. The law is spiritual. Number one, the formidable assumption. Number two, the failed assignments. When we learn here, or what we learn here, excuse me, is that a saved man, again, contains two natures. He contains his old nature, that edemic uh, uh, nature, that, that natural born nature, listen to me, that always does wrong. Let me make that statement again. That old nature, that edemic nature, that nature that we were born with, that is always wrong. Verse 18, you know what he said? 
For I know that in me dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. Why? Because he's looking in his flesh. What does it say? For, in, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. It doesn't even have the ability to do right. That's the edemic nature. That's the old man. Are y'all with me tonight? Say amen. amen. That's one nature. And then he talks about here, we find the other nature. The other nature is that nature, <clears throat> that new nature, that nature that comes to him by God, that, that nature that gives us the ability to do what's right. I want to read for you a verse that many struggle with that you have to take in context with this, this book. 1 John chapter 3. Let me tell you what's not scripturally correct. Sinless perfection in the life of a believer. Amen. Amen. Anybody that believes that we are to live sinless perfection doesn't believe the Bible. Because here's Paul, and what we've already read it, and we're going to get into it a little more. Paul wasn't sinlessly perfect, was he? Struggled immensely and was inspired by God to write this book. 1 John 3 verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. But brother Caleb, you just got done saying that that old nature can't do good. That's right, and we still got that old nature, don't we? But we've also got a new nature. Boy, if you, I hope this dawns on some of y'all. You know what John said? Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. That old nature only sins. That new nature, ho, oh, can't sin. That old nature always does what's wrong. That new nature never does what's wrong. When you do what's right, guess what? Guess why? Because that new nature that's in you. Why? Because you've been born of God. Well, Brother Shirley, what about when I do bad? That's that old nature. That's that carnal. That's that flesh that we still pack around. Doing what's wicked because it can't do right. This is profound. <laughs> I want you to notice the enslaved pressure of sin in 7 verse 15. For that which I do, I allow not. The word allow here is not what we would consider and how we consider the word allow. He's not using this word in regards to permission. He's using this word in regards to allow. Old timers used to use allow in that context. They would say things like, I don't allow that. In other words, I can't understand what they're saying. In my mind, I don't, I don't allow what they're talking about. Wasn't saying I don't permit it. They were saying, I don't understand that. So what's Paul saying here? What Paul's saying is this, I don't understand the things that I do. <laughs> how many of y'all, how many of y'all are going to bear witness with me right there? Come on. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with my mind. I don't know what's wrong with me. I struggle. He said, I don't, what he's saying is he's saying, I don't understand the things I do. Uh, the things I want to do, I don't do. But the things that I hate, I do. That's what Paul's saying. He's a born-again believer. But he's carnal. This is profound. He's still dealing with the old nature. Because we've got two of them. And he's fighting with that thing. And when he does things that he hates, he knows this is because of the old nature that's in me. And it has an enslaving pressure. And what is that old nature, church? It is sin. And guess what sin does? It sins. It does the opposite of good. It will never, sin will never be fixed of itself. It has to be destroyed. In other words, God will never give permission for sin to be okay. That's something that this new age ideology just can't comprehend. They want to act like now God's okay with our sin. No! <laughs> no! If that's what's being told, they ain't believing the Bible. 
He'll never be okay with sin. Sin will never be uh, uh, corrected. It has to be killed. And it will one day. But until then, guess what? We're going to be like Paul. I don't understand the things I do. Things I want to do, I ain't doing. The, the things I hate, I find myself doing. We find this enslaved pressure of sin. We find an eager prevention of self. Paul said, I want to do right. I'm wanting to. I need to. I'm, I'm striving to. You see this. He said, I, want, I, don't, I hate those things that I find myself doing. We find the indwelling power of sin. His good desire here in verse 16. Notice what he says in verse 16. If then I do that which I would not notice, I consent unto the law that it is good. You know what he's saying there? He's saying, if I find myself doing something that I don't want to do, he's saying, I know that it's because the law is good. And the law, listen to me, has told me this is bad. And because I'm born again, because I've been saved, I know I don't want that. I hate that. In other words, he's saying this is somewhat of a hidden blessing that I ought to be able to enjoy the fact that I hate what I'm doing and I used to wouldn't even hate it. Y'all see, conviction. I've heard it said in this church, I thank God for that old... I remember, I hate, I don't want to embarrass, but I remember Brother Norman coming in here one time saying, I thank God for the chastisement of the Holy Ghost. He said, God's been whooping me and that means He loves me. Amen. That's what Paul's saying. He's saying, when I do what's wrong and I feel, I feel bad about it, I know that's the law and the goodness of it. It changes you. It changes what you want. And guess what? As a believer, we still pack this nature. And guess what this nature has? It has some enslaving pressure. It has some indwelling power. This fight ain't for sissies. This ain't for the faint-hearted. That's why good people make huge mistakes. I don't like this crowd that looks at a preacher that falls out of the ministry and sin and saying, well, he must have never really had it. No, that ain't it. He's still packing the same nature, and you better beg God. You better beg God. I'm talking about get on your face and beg Him that He prevents you from ever having such a temptation that you throw it all away. I, I sat on the phone the other day with a boy I went to high school with weeping because he's thrown his life away. A boy that I have spent time... I stayed the night at his house as a, as a child. You know what happened? Sin. That's what happened. He's a good man. He loves his family. And he loves God. And I wouldn't dare tolerate somebody wanting to throw shade and act like, oh, he never was real. It was always fake. No. Paul said, I'm doing things I hate. Hmm. Then we see the fight that abides in verses 21 through 25. Paul says, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. In other words, it don't matter where I'm at. It don't matter if I'm at church. It don't matter if I'm at teen camp. It don't matter if I'm in camp meeting. It don't matter if I'm on the mountain or in the valley or out in the, on a boat in the middle of the ocean. It don't matter where I am. Guess what goes with me? Sinful nature. I'll never forget as a young man, first, second year I was at teen camp. It was great. You go to teen camp, you're a week away. You disconnect from everything. It's like heaven on earth in your mind. You're 12, 13 years old. I remember some boys I went with that was like, let's just stay here forever. It'd be so much better. You know what that is? That's a lie. Guess what we'd end up doing? Fighting, lying, bickering. Them monks in the monastery, guess what they are? <laughs> Sinners. I don't care how far away they disconnect, guess what they're still doing? Committing sin. But Brother Shirley, everything they do. But guess what? But guess what they've still got? Sinful nature. Amen. Amen. Paul here, he's showing us that there's a fight that abides. There's two laws here that we can find in this passage. In verse 25, we see them listed. He says, so then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the 
flesh, the law of sin. There's two warring laws. The law of God is that law that comes in conjunction with that new nature. That law of God is that new nature that only does what's good. It's the law that God has put in us to do that which is good. And that new nature cannot sin according to John uh, 1 John 3, 9. It said, whosoever is born, uh, uh, born of God cannot commit sin. Amen. That's the law of God. It's only good. And then you have the law of sin. Guess what that law of sin is? That's that old nature. That's that endemic nature. They can't do good. Sin always goes against God. Sin will always cause more and exceeding sinfulness in our life. It will never be drawn to God. Amen. That's what Paul's uh, talking about here. This fight that abides. He, he talks about the law of our mind and the law of our members. How that Paul said, in my mind, I find the law to do what's right. Now, I know what's right. I have understanding of what's right. I have wisdom in what's right. But yet in my members, Paul said, I find this desire and this law to do wrong. And I find myself doing the things that I hate and not doing the things that I know is good. This sounds like a psychotic experience. Help me, somebody. Guess what this is? This is the life of a believer. Got to get through chapter 7 before we get to chapter 8. Amen? We've got to come to terms with some of these things. Just because you fail ain't the end of the world. But that ain't no excuse to let yourself fail. There's still a fight to be fought. Paul called it a war. He, 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 he referenced this idea of warring in verse 23. I see another law of my members. Warring against the law of my mind. It's a warfare. In other words, you got to fight. <laughs> Yeah, He's given us the ability to do what's right, but He's put on us the, the responsibility to do what's right. This is all, listen to me, pointing to this truth. We saw the formidable assumption. Is the law causing bad to come out of me in death? No, Paul said. And then we see his the failed assignments. Paul said, no, that's not true. The failed assignments is because of the sin nature that's in us. Uh, we find ourselves doing what we shouldn't do. And we can't understand why we're even doing it, but we're doing it. And things we want to do, we ain't doing. Things that we hate, we are doing. Paul said, these are just failed assignments because of that nature. But the fight, the fight still abides. And we have to fight, Paul says. There's a law of God and a law of sin. There's a law of the mind and a law of the members. These are warring with each other. And we have to stand in the gap. We've got to fight and we've got to do our best to do what's right. Lastly, we see the fruit of alteration, the change. Look what he said in verse 7. Not verse 7, excuse me, verse 13. He said, was then that which is good made death? He said, no, sin, but sin that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good. Here in this fruit of alteration, what we see is we see Paul has experienced a new nature, and a change, and it's evident in how he looks at everything. So what do you mean? The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, old things are passed away, behold, all things become new. Amen. Amen. What does that mean? That means there should be a disdain for sin. There in verse 13, you know what we read? Paul's disdain for sin. Not only is there a disdain for sin, but there's a despise for self. Look what he said in verse 24. Oh, wretched man that I am. <laughs> Closest people to God that I've ever been around have a, have a, have a, a despise for themselves. Despise. I remember hearing them old saints that I grew up around stand and weep as they talked about getting to be in heaven one day where they'll never sin again. Why? Because they hated the sin and they hated that they couldn't stop themselves from committing it. Paul said, Oh, wretched man that I am. 
He had a despise for self. He had disdain for sin. And he had delight for the Savior. Verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know what Paul's saying? He's reiterating what life is. How did this discussion start in verse 13? He's trying to figure out what, what's causing the death. Guess what ain't causing the death? The law and God. Why? Because everything Jesus ever touched or come in contact with, if it was dead prior to, it was alive afterward. Things didn't have a choice but to live in His presence. <laughs> Amen. What a wonderful God. What a wonderful Savior. Just because you make mistakes, just because you fail, listen to me. Stop convincing yourself, well, I must not be saved. If you've got that settled, move on. Because guess what else you've got? A nature. A sinful nature. And guess what that sinful nature does? It knows your weakness. We blame so much on the devil. And I hate the devil. I can't wait to see Michael lay hold on that dragon. Glory be to an almighty God. And sling him into the lake of fire forever and ever. And we'll be there and we'll see it. And we'll shout. And we don't know what shouting is till we get to see old Slewfoot disappear forever. You're going to watch him bow down to the Savior. Are you kidding me? Hallelujah. Where was I? I'm enjoying that right there. I hate him. I hate the devil. I hate my nature. That's what I was talking about. We give him too much credit. Most of the time, you know what it is? It's our nature. And our nature's smart. That edemic nature's smart. It loves sin. And if it can cause you to sin, it will. And if that means convincing you you ain't saved because it's winning the war, then guess what? It's going to do that. It's going to keep scratching that edge because you're allowing yourself to consider, well, I must not really be saved because I keep sinning. I keep struggling with my temptation. That's not what the Bible says. It doesn't teach sinless perfection. You can't be sinlessly perfect because you have that old nature still. Amen. Amen. So what do I do? Them old timers, they know so much. They would say it's like you got two dogs. How many of y'all have heard that analogy? A white dog and a black dog. That old timer would say whichever one I say sick him two more is the one that wins. And that's pretty good. Which one are you rooting for? That old nature or that new nature? Which one, let me ask you this, which one do you feed more? It, it's time to quit preaching. I could preach another iron. Which one do you feed more? Some of us ain't, ain't fed the new nature in weeks, months. So how am I supposed to feed it? The bread of life. The living water. Whew, that book, Supernatural. It's strength in a time of weakness. Feed that, feed that, feed that nature. Feed that new nature. Be present at God's house. Be present when, when the things of God are going on. Be around God's people. Hallelujah. It's still church time, son. Hold on just a minute. Listen. What kind of music do you listen to? What kind of are you spending more time watching wicked movies than you are uh, uh, listening to preaching or, 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 or going to church or reading your Bible or praying? Hey, help me, church. Amen. It's right, even if it hits you right square in the chest. Amen. There's a spiritual warfare going on all around us. And guess what we got to do? We got, Brother Stray, I don't understand why I keep struggling with this sin. It's probably because you're still giving your old nature place to sin. And Paul's going to get into those things as we move on farther. But it's important that you realize you still, you've still got the old nature and there's a battle to be fought. And you've got to recognize the enemy so that you can actually fight it. And stop just blaming Satan for every time you, your old nature, makes the mistake. And just because you make mistakes don't mean you're lost. If you've ever put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior, and received Him and Him alone and rejected what you are and confessed that thing. 
According to scriptures, you're born again. But you still got that old birth in you. And you got to fight with it. Let's bow our heads. Ain't God's word wonderful, church? God help us. Lord, I am a, I am a wretch. Paul said, oh wretch that I am. God, I'm a wretch. Tomorrow I can ruin this whole thing if I allow myself. And God, if you put it, I pray God you, God, I pray you never allow such temptations on me. God, I'm afraid of me. I don't trust me. I don't ever want to think I can trust me because I can't. I cannot. Help me, Jesus, to trust in you. Thank you for your word. I pray it went out tonight and made sense. I pray you use it for your honor, for your glory. I love you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope that message made sense. I hope that message helped you. I hope you can take it with you. And uh, maybe, just maybe, it'll be a difference maker in the future. All right. Anybody with a word, something you'd like to say or do, anything at all, real quick, before we dismiss. Thank you, Brother Joe. That'll help somebody that used to think you could lose your salvation. Amen? Makes sense, don't it, brother? When you see the Word. I appreciate that. Anybody else? I appreciate your faithfulness, church. Be sure to fellowship one with another. And uh, we'll see you again Sunday, Lord willing. Pray one for another. And feed that new nature. Amen? God bless you. You're dismissed in the fear of the Lord. Thank you for coming.